Each pre-flight check in PDF Toolbox checks for potential problems in a PDF. Checks are the building blocks of pre-flight profiles with which you perform quality control on PDF files. Creating them is pretty straightforward, but is still probably the most complicated part of using PDF Toolbox. Therefore, it's usually a good idea to look whether a pre-flight check already exists, similar to what you need, to duplicate that and then modify it until it does exactly what you want. But let's see the basics about creating new checks. First of all, we need to open the checks window and I can get to the checks window by going to tools and then selecting checks or by pressing command 4 on Mac, control 4 on Windows. This opens the checks window where I see a list of all the checks in my current library. And if I would change to a different library, I would of course see a different list of checks in there. Now we can decide whether we are going to duplicate an existing check, which would be by going to the action menu and then saying duplicate check, or whether we're going to create a new check by using the create check option. Let's try the letter here and we get the check editor where everything is set to default values. We're going to start by giving this new check a name and we could here, for example, say document contains spot color. Remark that I filled in this name where it says when check fires report as. For a check, firing means that it detects a problem. If you afterwards create a pre-flight report, the name of the check that we filled in here is also going to be what is written in the pre-flight report. So if clients are going to see that pre-flight report, it's important to write this name in such a way that your clients are going to understand it. The left-hand side of the check editor contains a whole lot of additional advanced settings, and we're going to leave all of them to their default settings here, with one exception. Where it says ignore objects outside, I'm going to click this checkbox, and I'm going to change the menu to bleed box. And the result of this is going to be that any objects that live completely outside of the bleed box are going to be ignored by this particular check. Next, we need to add conditions. And this is done in the right half of the check editor. Conditions are what determines whether a check will detect a problem or not. And you can have as many different conditions as you need. In our example check, we said we wanted to detect spot color, so we're going to need a condition that talks about spot color. The list of conditions is at the top. The conditions that are in our current check will be at the bottom. So let's go to the filter area and type spot color. And now we see a long list of conditions that have to do with spot color. And I spotted one here that is called is spot color, which seems to do exactly what we want. So I can select that one. You get a little bit of explanation in here. And now by double clicking or by clicking add, I can add this condition to our check. Once a condition appears in the list of conditions for the check, you can also see its properties. And some conditions in PDF Toolbox have no properties, so they don't have to be configured. Some are relatively simple, like the one we just added, and some might have very complex properties. Here, we only need to do one thing, and that is set this parameter to is true. The reason we want that is because we want to get a hit from this check if the document contains spot color. In other words, if the condition is spot color that we have added is true, which we selected as the property. Click OK to save this check. And it appears in the list of our checks. And now we can use the Analyze button to test it on our current document. In the results list, you can see document contains spot color, one match. I can open this up to get more information about the object. 
I can double click it to have it highlighted in the document. And I can use show in snap to get this object that triggered the hit separately shown to verify that it is indeed what we wanted to detect. There is, of course, much more to building checks once you start working with multiple conditions, but these are the basics. The best way to learning more is by reading the documentation on help.calasoftware.com or by going to a built-in library and investigating how the checks are built inside those standard libraries.